Hey everyone, National Master Sean Lay here today. So, there seems to be a lot of confusion lately about what a minority attack is, when to do a minority attack, is it better than a majority attack, what is a majority attack? And so today I'm going to be answering these questions in a pretty simple way. Now, there are going to be exceptions of course, but for the most part, that's going to be it. So let's get straight into it. So let me show you what the most common minority setup looks like. So this is a minority pawn structure here for white and black on the other hand has a majority pawn structure. I'm going to be telling you the basic plans in this position for white and the basic uh, advantages for black. So this is going to be the most common pawn structure when it comes to a minority pawn structure versus a majority pawn structure and it's a good example basically to start you guys off on your journey to learning about these type of attacks. Personally, I love minority attacks a lot more than majority attacks, but that's just the me thing. Most people, I think, do like majority attacks a lot more because they're a lot more exciting. But as you guys know, I'm a much more positional player. All right, so this is a minority pawn structure. Don't mind no kings. It's just here to show you the pawn structure. What is the goal of a minority pawn structure? Well, the goal here is very simple. We have two pawns here. Our opponent has three. That's why it's called a minority pawn structure. This pawn structure is generally stronger in the middle game and gets weaker and weaker as time goes on as we get closer to the end game. Now, why is that the case, you might ask? Well, the reason why this is the case is because in the middle game, you generally have more pieces to support these pawns. Now, what are we supporting these pawns to do? Well, what we're trying to do here is we're going to try to push these pawns up in a way that can get this pawn over here to move, either to push, take or let us take them so let me show you let's say we get b4 a4 b5 and let's just say our opponent doesn't do anything and lets us take them well in this position in case you guys can't tell this pawn over here is considered a backwards pawn backwards pawn are generally not good in a position now why are these pawns generally not good because they can be easily attacked by your opponent's rooks imagine there are two rooks here imagine there was like a bishop or um, over here and there are like two rooks over here this pawn would probably be a goner because there's not really a good way to protect it because it is backwards and it cannot move forwards so as you guys can see the point of a minority pawn structure is to basically loosen up your opponent's queen side so that you can beat up the pawns that remain now let's say the opponent doesn't decide to just ignore you and they decide to take you instead does the minority pawn structure still hold up the answer is yes because in this position over here, instead of having a weak pawn on c6, they have two new weaknesses in this position. I want you guys to pause your videos here and try to tell me, where do you think the two weaknesses here are? Now, if you said a7 and d5, well, guess what? You would be correct. Now, why are these two pawns the most attacked pawns, you might ask? Well, it's quite simple. The reason why these two pawns are very weak is because, first of all, this is an isolated pawn. And again, an open file for you to attack. And if your opponent ever plays a6, you can trade off this pawn easily, get double rooks here, even get a queen here, maybe get an Alakine's gun, bishop here or something, just attack this pawn until it's doomed. This d5 pawn can also be a target once that falls, and when these two pawns fall, you will be up two extra pawns, and therefore, be up in the position. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Sean, this seems to me too good to be true. Is there any... Problems with having a minority pawn structure? And the answer is, yeah, there are some problems with the minority pawn structure, especially if you don't play properly. Now, black's not going to dilly dally do nothing. And a good player as black won't be giving you a, a, this um, pawn storm on the queen side for no reason. So let me show you what black might be doing. Well, guess what? They get this uh, semi open e file over here, which means they get a very nice outpost on this e4 square. Black has a plan here to attack your king's side. Imagine they had a bishop here, a knight over here, and let me just put the pieces on the board for you guys over here. Well, if you get a structure that looks like this, now obviously they're going to have um, more pieces, but imagine they get a structure like this where there's so many pieces attacking your king's side and then white's just dilly-dallying on the queen side over here trying to do their pawn storm over here. Well, this could spell quite a disaster here for um, the white position because his pieces are out of place and black can easily bring his pieces to attack the king's side at the same time. Now, 
this is what Black is trying to do. He's probably just trying to bring his rooks over, up and over, just bring in more pieces to attack the White King. And White will just have to learn how to deal with this type of stuff, while also making sure that his queenside pawn storm is happening at the same time. Now, why did I say the minority uh, pawn structure did not like um, to go into the end game? Well, generally, the reason why that's the case is because I want you to just imagine the kings were off the board for a second. And you get this type of pawn structure. Well, one thing that black could try to do here is they could try to get an outside passer. Especially if the minority pawn structure looked a little less like this, but it looked a little bit more like this. Now, this is still a minority pawn structure because it's 2 versus 3. But there is a problem in this position for um, the white pieces. And now, not this position uh, specifically, but let's say the position looks something like this. Well, what's wrong, you might ask? The problem here is that black can get an outside passer. And outside passers in the end game are quite strong. Because the problem is for white is that he needs to get his king all the way over here to make sure the pawn doesn't go anywhere too fast. And while that's happening, black can come, enter white's position, and gobble up all these pawns. White always needs to be worried about the outside passer. Black does not really because these pawns have a much higher difficulty of getting a passed pawn when it's a 4 on. Three. Now, hopefully you guys understood this quick lesson on minority attacks and majority attacks, and basically got a brief overview of what to do when your pawn structure when with your pawn structure when you have a minority attack or majority attack. And hopefully you guys can implement these ideas into your own chess games. If you guys have any questions, because I know I did talk about this very, very, very fast, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.